Empowering subcontractors to build better. Sounds like a great goal, doesn't it? Welcome to Bridging the Gap with Applied Software. I'm your host, Todd Wyant. This is the show where we empower you to transform industries by championing innovation. Please feel free to interact with us by liking or commenting on this video. We would love to hear from you. Today, we are recording from MEP Force 2019 in San Antonio, where over 400 MEP trade professionals have come together to learn from each other. I am joined by one of our partners and an MEP Force sponsor, Wendy Rogers, president and CEO of eSub, who is taking up the challenge to help subs build better. Welcome to the show, Wendy. Thank you Excited so much. Thank you. you. Excited to be here. Yeah. Uh, can, can you start by just kind of giving a brief overview of your, your background and who eSub is? Sure. Uh, so I'm founder and CEO of eSub. We are a cloud-based um, project management, field collaboration, labor productivity tool specifically for MEP contractors, so okay. for the labor-intensive contractors, so all subs. Um, I started my career sort of in construction as a consultant, uh -huh. and I worked with uh, subcontractors for many years in representing them with a team of lawyers um, during payment disputes, okay. uh, produced Fun construction time. claims, yeah. and then decided that there was a better way of doing things, and so let's put in documentation procedures in advance that are according to best practices so that we're avoiding disputes, gotcha. so that we're covered uh, in case something does come up, uh -huh. but in, a, in the best of all worlds, that we're documenting appropriately, we're manage our, our, managing our teams proactively, that we're transparent on the job, that we're accountable, and that we're making money as well. Yeah, very cool. So being that we're here at MEP Force, it's really focusing in on the MEP trades. What do you, uh, what's kind of the ESUB's calling card of coming alongside and, and helping the trades? Yeah, so I think it's about, um, you know, just recognizing the fact that there's a lot of solutions that are out on the market. In fact, there's about 2,600 uh -huh. construction technology solutions that are out on the market. And so there's a lot of this sort of uh, disenfranchisement of the industry with regard to the solutions that are out there. There's mm -hmm. lots of point solutions. There's a lot of uh, project management solutions that are geared specifically toward general contractors. Mm -hmm. But as a trade contractor, where we make or, or break our profit off of our labor, um, it's really important for us to be just on top of anything that's happening throughout the course of the project, mm -hmm. staying on top of changes, because unfortunately a lot of our, our buildings are only 30 to 50 percent uh, designed by the time that we're going into the construction phase of things. Yeah. And so it's about staying in touch with field first, um, uh, labor productivity, what's happening, communication, issues, uh -huh. all of that in a subcontractor workflow so that we have a system of record for all of our data consistently on the project. Gotcha. Uh, and so how's the conference been going for you so far? It's great. It's, it, this is, I, I, I go to a lot of conferences and what I find is that the folks that are here are just the innovators of the industry. I mean, mm -hmm. the VDC teams these days are, are so smart and, and so good at what they do. And it's really the way that construction needs to be working now into the future is to be able to have a situation where we've got design-driven construction mm -hmm. and that we're utilizing the benefits of 3D, 3D modeling and modeling uh, to a, a higher degree of certainty so that we can get into the benefits of moving forward with prefabrication and all of that. So this is such a core group of people because these are the smart people in the industry in my opinion and yeah. um, they're the people that are the constructability experts they're the people that are the future of construction yeah very cool so uh, how does ESUB go about connecting the office and the field together yeah so we do that through the cloud and then we also do it through mobile device and mobile apps that okay. don't require an internet connection oh, nice. so the thought is when we're out in the field and we're doing a lot of things we've got our foreman out in the field and we're installing you know material we're working project management in the field mm -hmm. that we can easily capture issues and data reports and put together time that's tied to our cost codes that mm -hmm. creates labor efficiency reports so we can mm -hmm. easily track that and then in the back office that it communicates back then with the web app and then the other thing that we like to do is we work from sort of the design phase of mm -hmm. things 
bringing in the estimate at the beginning of the, of the job as a baseline and then passing off relevant information into integrations with accounting systems. So we're heavily into uh, an integration strategy with other software companies. We've got lots of partners including Autodesk uh, who's actually, we're part of their Forge funded um, companies. Okay. So they are a, are invested in ESEB as the subcontractor platform basically yeah. working into the Autodesk ecosystem and then we also partner with uh, plan grid and dozens of accounting solutions on the back end. Oh, well, that's great. Uh -huh. yeah. So here at MVP Force, one of the, the biggest demographics is on the mechanical contractor side. How does ESUB's project management software help increase efficiency for them? I think what we do is, you know, I like to start just foundationally at the cost code level. Mm -hmm. So coming in and making sure that we have streamlined cost codes and that we're phasing out our jobs properly. Okay. So we can do a breakdown, a work breakdown structure that gives us very specific costs and efficiencies. And when it comes down then into, for instance, prefabrication, you're doing the same type of thing. You need to be on top of all of your materials and all of your labor and what it's taking to come in and to effectively manage our labor force, manage our design force, do all of that. Yeah, so. nice. Uh, so the, the other segment of MEP Force is uh, focusing on the electrical contractor. What does having project data on demand mean to the electrical side? I think what it means is complete transparency on the job. Mm -hmm. So the more that, you know, there's always been sort of this conundrum with subcontractors, with labor intensive contractors, mm -hmm. whether it's electrical, mechanical, drywall, any of the, the, the contractors that are, that are the trades, that are the laborers on the yeah. project. And that is that the delta between what we bid and what we did, mm -hmm. and the fact that we always have a catch-22 because we're so busy in the in the field doing the work to keep up with all of the changes that are happening happening in the iterations of the design as we're moving through construction. Sure. But we don't have time to document what we're doing. But the problem is we don't get paid for what we do. We right. get paid for what we document. <laughs> That's right. And so whether you're an electrical contractor or a mechanical contractor, it's really important for all of our people to just be on top of deadlines and deliverables. Mm -hmm. and and then to communicate appropriate upstream so that we're getting proper payment for the work that we do because let's face it, we're not a charity. Right, yeah, you gotta make money somehow. That's right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what kind of industry trends have you seen over the last couple of years? So what I'm seeing now is a huge force um, in the industry that I'm very, very passionate about, which is recognizing the power and um, the, the benefit of the trades. Mm -hmm. The trades are, especially MEP trades, are the constructability experts in the industry. Yeah. And as we're looking at increased use of BIM technology mm -hmm. in modeling projects, right? And we're looking at the foundational issue of a declining labor force, and we're looking at labor productivities that are declining. The thought is that if we had more constructible models right. in the beginning, if our if our if our skilled trades were getting involved sooner in the in the design phase of things yeah. versus later on, that we would have more constructible designs from the get go. We would have better buildings that are built cheaper, faster, and and more efficiently and in for the betterment of the entire industry. So yeah. I'm really thrilled to see that finally the, the skilled trades are getting the start of the recognition that they deserve because yeah. they are the true builders, right. the true builders, and they are the people that have the, all of the, the brain power to take us to that next level of DFMA. Yeah. You need the input from the constructability experts in the industry, which is all the MEP contractors, to be able to up efficiencies and up uh, just the status of the industry as a whole. Yeah, they're definitely the unsung heroes of Absolutely. construction. Absolutely. I think that's been one of the cool things of the keynotes, that common theme of uh, really a hopeful message that the MEP, uh, you know, they're the contractor's time is here and they're yeah. going to be really leading the future. I think. Absolutely. I've been championing the trades for 25 years of my career yeah. and I'll con continue to do so because they're, they're the smartest people around. It's a great industry. They're very, very smart people, and I'm so excited to see them uh, just really advancing much, much more with the VDC teams, and, yeah. and just the brain power here is unbelievable. Nice. Uh, so if you can look into your, your crystal ball, where do you see the industry in three to five years out? I see us doing what a lot of the other parts of the world are doing, which is coming into, again, getting the constructability experts uh. earlier on in the design phase of the project, mm -hmm. which shortens 
the life, the, the term of the project. Also, if you're looking at the fact that 80% of a project cost is in operations and maintenance, yeah. if we can get the MEP contractors in earlier in the design process, it's going to shorten and uh, uh, or substantially decrease the amount for operations and maintenance for the future. Yeah. We need to educate owners that the skilled trades are the people that they need to look to first right. in designing these, these better buildings that are going to be delivered um, on time, on budget, earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, and, and then we're gonna be moving more and more towards prefabrication and, and design for manufactured assembly because it just makes sense. It's scalable mm -hmm. and it's all the people that are here that are leading that charge. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Wendy, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Really appreciate your industry insights. And thank you to all those watching. If you are interested in learning any more about eSub or any of our products or services, visit eSub.com or ASTI.com. Until next time, I'm Todd Wyant, thanking you for joining us on Bridging the Gap with Applied Software. Keep innovating.